Well, good morning. Welcome back for those of you who were here yesterday. And for uh, those who weren't here yesterday, welcome. Welcome back, Sweet. Welcome back, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really happy you showed up. Yeah, I, uh, I, would, I had mine to sleep straight through, through, straight through to noon. I know. <laughs> Those rooms are comfortable and roomy, too. <laughs> I don't get up this <laughs> early on Sunday. Yeah, this is a... <laughs> is there... Um, is there anybody, uh, just right off the top, if there's something that occurred to you overnight? Did everybody experience perfect well-being after our, our talk yesterday? We were expecting perfect well-being. Good, yes. yes. Yeah. Well, we had, we had a really nice night last night. We, after, whoever didn't stay, sorry, I'm just making jealous for a bit. Uh, we came back here at 8 o'clock and we got to watch uh, Sydney Banks film, and uh, it just it's it's real exciting. Uh, all you see is Sydney Banks talking for about 28 minutes, but it was really nice. It was really relaxing. I had never, I've watched that video probably 20 times, and uh, it never seemed so clear to me. So it was really nice. And I think I mean it seemed to me, and the other people that were there watching also were enjoying it. I'm guessing it's because the talk you gave yesterday really helped you, you, you a lot. Yeah. <laughs> I helped me. <laughs> Doctor, hear, heal thyself. <laughs> did, anybody, did anybody have any, any insights? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <clears throat> My name is Tzvi Werther. I met you at um, the workshop on a Sunday about six months ago. A year, a year ago. ago. I was at that workshop. And you came back. And I came That's a wow. good sign. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm Mark Spiro. Nice to meet you. Uh, Rabbi Spiro has flown all the way out from uh, Seattle wow. to it's join us here. Time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you guys need to get okay. some new jokes. Some serious turbulence. <laughs> That's why you were complaining about the turbulence. The turbulence, exactly. I'm not kidding. Yeah. I flew out all the way from Seattle just to be with you, so behave yourself. <laughs> no, no insights, no uh, questions? Yeah. I was sharing with Yes, please do share that. That is a wonderful thing to see, I think, and very helpful. What was the question? We were just wanting, wondering if anybody wanted to share any thoughts or insights or questions or... Did anything occur to you uh, overnight about what we were talking about yesterday? Or... Um, uh, about anything at all <laughs> that besides, you think is pertinent. Yeah. Besides those presenters, sure are good looking. And we don't want to waste time on things that are <laughs> widely known and <laughs> <laughs> readily accepted. Clearly, you can look at it. Right, the black and white discriminator you are. You are. You are. You are. You are. So, is it like a funnel? 
like the thought of mind constant coming into us into uh, thought, like mind thought? I, I kind of look at it like that a little bit, sort of like mind, mind takes form. One of the ways that it, you know, the formless takes form, and obviously takes form in the in the world we live in, and in, in physical form, but also it takes form in, in 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 the thoughts that we have. Thought. Yeah. Are you saying that the thoughts originate in mind? Well, you know, I think that I, I don't know if I want to go that far, just because obviously we have. I don't. I, I'm not. I'm. I haven't thought that. I haven't had a thought about that, so I don't, I don't know. I've got a, I've got a great way to, to illustrate it. It's right over here. Let me just pull it out. I think it's in here. My daddy Christmas. Uh, here it is. Okay, so uh, this is a this is a wire, right? So the way this this wire works is, you put it in the the back of the the microphone, and you plug it into the into the machine that you want it to broadcast. So it kind of, uh, mind would, it puts the, puts something in here, the right? Current. Gets mixed around, goes through the wire, and poof, out the other end comes the sound, right? So it's the same thing, it's the same thing with us. So that we've got, uh, we're seeing after it's already come out the other end of the wire. That's all we get to see. So we're not exactly sure what's happening in the wire, but it's That's right. Originating. What's going on inside the wire? We're not sure about like it, it's coming from. Well, here's what we're sure about. Well, here's what we've seen about it, is that it's it's before we can get a sense of it, but because it's before what we get to see, uh, it's before uh, our ability to comprehend. It's before it's happening before life. Um, it's formless. Okay. Yeah. But I, I get that part. So but the funnel is a great metaphor, great way to see it also. I ask you, like, okay. why are you asking? You know, ultimately, we're, 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 we have a neshama, you know, and that's, that's ultimately a little piece of Hashem. And, and that's where our life generates from, obviously. Um, but uh, these are deep philosophical, deep philosophical points. That maybe, you have, maybe you have more to say on that? Well, yeah, I've thought about this question a lot, so that... Let's say the, 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 the way I ask the question is, okay, great, I feel my thinking. I get that, right? Let's say I get that to a degree, right? Okay, you don't get it, but let's say, let, let's pretend for a minute, right? <laughs> let's pretend, everyone knows it. I don't feel anything but I think my thinking, great. But where does my thinking come from? Like what? That's kind of my question. Right, that'll be <laughs> where, what determines uh, what channel I'm on? Where does, where does that come from? Yeah. I mean, there, you know, our, our tradition teaches us about Chachma, you know, that, this, that, that our, many of our thoughts emerge from Chachma, but there's also there's the Chachma of the Yitzhara as well. There's Zelu Mazah. So it's, it's a complicated, it's not so easy. Yitzhara also comes from? Ultimately. Ultimately, we all, ultimately there's only one so it's source for everything. The final one, the chord is sort of. Yeah, yeah. But obviously, not every thought that we have is real. Is real chachma. You know, we get we get a lot of shtus, a lot of craziness, as well. So. No, oh, uh, there was someone over here that was. No, no, no. I don't know. What, 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 yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. So what? What was it that that you you don't uh, that you don't see?
we're not saying that it has no effect on you. What we're saying is the past is gone. It's, does, it's not here anymore. The past is past. The future is, hasn't come yet. That's not the same thing as saying it has no effect in the sense that I, I mentioned yesterday, we have bad thinking habits, for example. We pull up memories, we pull up, uh, you know, thoughts, patterns that we've habituated ourselves to for whatever reason. Uh, does that come from our past? Yeah, it came from our past. So am I going to tell you your family of origin has no impact on you? No, it may very well have had impact on you, but we're, we're simply stating that ultimately what the impact is today is your thinking. Today, it's, it's coming to you through thought. And you can decide whether you still want to have that affect you or whether you're not having that affect you anymore. Perhaps, but certainly the first thing you can know is it's the first thing you can be aware that, 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 that what you're experiencing is your thinking. If you're, you know, having, uh, if, if, if you're, God forbid, your parents were abusive or something, but they're no longer with us, they're no longer with us. Or if they're no longer abusive, they're not. So what we want people to see is they're not a prisoner of their past. You're not a, you're not a prisoner of your past, but you may, you may very well have insight about something that you've carried along, you know, like a bad thinking habit, a, 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 an assumption you've made about yourself or about life that you all of a sudden might realize, oh, that's just an assumption I've been making, or that's just a thought that I've been having, but I d it's not really true. So, and, and you might come to that via some of the work you've done. You may have come to those things through that path as well. But we're, we're simply stating that, uh, that, that the only thing we experience at any, at any moment in life is the thought that we're having in that moment that we're bringing to life. We're, we're trying to simplify this uh, not just because we're trying to simplify it, but because we really, we really believe that it is that simple. So are we saying that mind is like Hashem, thought is like a traffic, like you guys said, the car is sticking things in Hashem, and it's sitting in good, bad, whatever. That's stuff in here. Right. Mm -hmm. So we're saying that it's all coming from Hashem. Ultimately. Like sometimes, like why do people have like desires to be better? Why do people have all the other stuff? That's Correct. Really Well, you have this thing called consciousness that, mm -hmm. that brings to life your thinking. You, you, it makes the thinking that you have feel not like thinking at all. It feels like, oh, that's obviously real. So, you know, that, that's, that's that gift that we have to bring things to life. And sometimes we don't bring our thinking to life. Sometimes we just see it as thinking. Sometimes someone says something, or, or sometimes we have a thought that just seems kind of crazy to us, or, or, or just like a silly thought. But we do bring a lot of our thinking to life, and we experience it as though it's the world. We look so at it. Like, past experience of not coming with, with that, how do they that? So, so we're we're here to talk not so much about how to stop that, but how to first of all under how to under, how to see what's happening. We, we we we're suggesting that. When people become aware of what's going on inside them, how that process is taking place, that that already is really what they need to know. That that in, that in and of itself has um, a tremendously positive benefit for their lives. I think uh, Mitch, had, oh, Mitch had his yeah. hand up first. Maybe you'll get this, but what about when there's a disconnect between thoughts and then the resulting behavior? Let's say you have people with addictions, and those addictions are sometimes totally out of sync with the person's thoughts. You know, they, they engage in certain behaviors, but those behaviors are not necessarily flowing from a result of their thoughts. There's a gap there, there's a disconnect. So how does that play into the Yeah, well, well definitely. Oh we're, oh, we're not answering questions. We're just well. I, I just it, it sounded it sound like he was wondering if we were going to get to it. And oh, the answer is, yeah. Well, well, if you get to it, we'll fine. try to get to it. Okay. Because I, I, I think it's a long answer that would make a difference. So stick with us. And I think that we'll I, can, I can say very short, because yeah. it t totally segues into what I just said to, um, what was your name again? Shana. Uh, that's, the, that's an example of a thought where I really don't have insight. In other words, many of my thoughts are not really, I don't, I don't bring certain thoughts to life. That's exactly an example of that. I can have thoughts that just look like kind of thinking. 
Yeah, and, and what happens sometimes is a person gets insight and they all of a sudden, that becomes a reality, a much deeper realization, and they, and they don't go back to the addiction. because I wanted to do it anyway. Here we go. <laughs> okay, so uh, hmm. what time is our first break? <laughs> break. Somebody ready for a break? <laughs> Breaks are way more important than me talking, trust me. <laughs> you guys know that already. Our first break is 10.45. Okay. Okay, so uh, when we talk about uh, principles, uh, one of the things that, uh, some of the things that we can say about principles is that they are constant. So that they're always, they're always gonna be operating. Like if something, if something's a principle, if something's a fundamental rule, so it's gonna be true all the time, right? Is it, like gravity, like the law of gravity. Exactly. Right. So gravity is, you can't, uh, gravity is not up to you. It's another thing we can say about principles is that they're not something that you do. They're, uh, they're just truths about how we understand how our world operates. Right. So uh, one of the ways that we understand about how our world operates, one of the principles that were discovered was the principle of gravity. So that it wouldn't make a difference if you were black or white, male or female, north of the equator, south of the equator, uh, uh, before the Christian era or after the Christian era. It doesn't make a difference. Uh, gravity uh, was always true, always will be true. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's a constant, and there's no exceptions. Uh, now, they've, uh, they've discovered more and more about uh, the principle of gravity. Uh, as they've learned more and more about physics, the, the, they understand more and more about why gravity works, why gravity does what it does. And uh, we're going to be doing the same thing here with these principles. So you've got three principles, three fundamental uh, requirements, three elements that must be present in order for a human being to have an experience of life, even one moment of it. So that if you have a human being who in, uh, any, at any given moment is missing mind, somehow he lost it, or is missing consciousness, or missing thought, what would exist for that person? Nothing. Nothing, Nothing. exactly. We're on the same page here. <laughs> okay? Yeah, go ahead. Rabbi Munchweiss of the nation's name I don't remember said um, nothing exists. The world does not exist. Nothing exists until you put a meaning to it. Okay? Um, there's a lady down the road making breakfast for her kids. I, to me, that doesn't exist because I'm not there watching her make Objective. So the things in the world, mind creates the things in the world. Consciousness is, is you see it, you hear it, you taste it, you feel it. An unconscious person is lying there on the ground. They claim they can hear. I hope so, because my mother was unconscious. Um, but they don't know what's going on around them. They don't see, they don't feel. They're unconscious. You are conscious, so you perceive what mind has created, <coughs> the trees outside, this room, whatever. And that produces an experience which produces your thought. Um, you know, what are you thinking about this moment? As it may probably be different than what I'm thinking about at this moment. So, but nothing is real, nothing exists until you 
come across it and give it reality. I'm going to switch seats with you over here. <laughs> it's much hotter up here. <laughs> Thank you. Now, I'm going to try to I'm going to try to say the same thing that Mrs. Goldstein just said uh, in a in a different way. Um, but I, I I think though that uh, uh, what I, I was really uh, I, I wanted you to see first is that they are uh, that the principles that we're talking about are these fundamental constants that are already in play, already operating on you, and if, and if you are having an experience of some kind, it means the system's working perfectly, and that uh, there's nothing that you need to do about it. Uh, uh, and you can see if it's working for you by checking to see if you're having an experience of some kind. So if you're having an experience of any kind, even one that you don't like, that would mean that the system is operating perfectly. Yeah? Just to clarify something, I'm confused. This is both being described in order of mind, consciousness, you know, how perceiving things, and then thought. You guys are talking about mind, thought, and then consciousness. That a minor detail, or it seems to me like a yeah. fundamental question? Oh, great question. So let me help you take something off your mind. The order makes no difference. At least in listening to Sidney Banks last night, uh, I had never really, I've, again, I listened to that 20 times before. I'd never heard him really say it before. Mind, thought, if you discover mind, you will discover thought. If you discover thought, you will discover consciousness. If you discover consciousness, you'll discover thought. So they're all the same things. They're all the same. Now, what? <laughs> they're separate and they're the same? Well, I'm not really quite sure that I can wrap my head around it. But what we've seen is, is that it doesn't really make that much of a difference as to which one comes first. Because what we're looking at is we're looking at a paradigm through which experience shows up. You need these three elements to be present in order for me to be able to have an experience. So it doesn't make a difference really, but well, does this one come first? Does that one come first? Which one's more important? Which one should I work on? You're not working on any of them. Uh, it's kind of like in order for there to be, uh, to be a, a nice day, it, there needs to be sun, right? Without sun, you can't see, right? That's the problem in Seattle. That's right. <laughs> Listen, I didn't want to tell him, but he's figured it out. I don't want to make him feel like <clears throat> So it's not really so much about, uh, you know, the order. Really, the order, it's not, it's not a sequential thing at all. In fact, they come together. Oof. <clears throat> and out plops out. Maybe there's a better term you can use. <laughs> I don't even teach oftentimes the three principles. Uh, and the, the point as far as I'm concerned is we need to understand that we're the creators of our reality. And, and, and so yes, we do it through, through thinking that we bring to life. I mean, yeah, it's really, talk a little louder. I'm sorry. Are we not, are we, <laughs> try to, okay. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. I think I know what thought is, but what is well, you can't. I haven't said it yet. Well, what's my business? <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, you might know what it is. Um, but, uh, and this is... No, my question is what... what I'm wondering if a lot of these questions will be answered just by letting you do your thing and Great. see if some of the questions okay. fall away. So here's, here's what we're going to do, uh, based on Basia's suggestion. This is I'm going to drone on for a while, and it's it'll be on me to try to keep connected with you and if uh, and, and I'm going to have a oversight committee here okay and uh, we spent some time on this yesterday so I guess really if we were going to review about how to listen here today it, it would be um, uh, to ignore your own questions that, sh that pop up in your mind uh, let whatever you're hearing just wash over you wash over you uh, Try to spend less time, or if you find yourself agreeing with me, disagreeing with me, not understanding me, working on trying to figure it out, uh, uh, just ignore all that. And just kind of hang out, have a nice time. Really, don't work at all. Uh, because, well, I hope you'll see why that's important one day. I, I'm not sure that I can show it to you. The best that I can see right now is that they told me the same thing when I was sitting out there. 
and I had no clue what they were talking about. But for some reason, I don't take credit for it, I had, I had the humility to kind of give it a try. And, uh, and, and I tried it. And any time I found my, my mind wavering and, and not paying attention to what was being said, so I tried to ease myself back to it. And if I couldn't do that, all right, well, I could. But the idea is, is that you just want to kind of let this wash over you. Because we understand that the way that people under, uh, learn and realize how this works is not an intellectual exercise. And all of us have been conditioned to learn uh, to, to learn through intellectual analysis. And I know how hard it is to try to trust to, uh, that there's a way, another way to learn that has nothing to do with you and your effort. Also, I think, Steve, just one more thing. Like, once you get through what you want to say, there's like a bigger picture you're trying to get to. And if we keep interrupting you, you kind of don't get there. And once we see the whole picture, some of these questions really may fall away. Mm -hmm. Hopefully. Hopefully. Hopefully, and maybe not, yeah. but yeah. yeah. Okay, so, so we've got, uh, you know, let's, let, let's do the drawing again, right? So we've got, we've got two worlds over here. We've got, uh, this is again, you know, our art school, Harvard that I went to, right? <laughs> <laughs> this is the world. This is planet Udu. Uh, okay. oh, I just made that up. Okay. We all live on this planet. There are real people here. Okay. That would be me. Where's Pearl Stone? Pearl Stone is uh, it's on the other side. <laughs> okay. Now we've got three principles over here. We're going to call it the three Ps. Now, I want to show you what, the th what I'm saying, to me at least, and you can say what you want about this, uh, what I think the three principles are coming to explain. The three principles are not coming to explain this world. They're coming to explain, if we were to take a, a magnifying glass, right, and look into this man's, this man's mind and blow it up, all right? There's his mind. We're going to be looking at, uh, we're going to be looking at that. The three Ps are going to explain what's going on mind. Okay, so when I say that the, that, uh, the world is all thought, I don't mean the physical world that we live in. I'm talking about uh, the mind of man. Now, what's in the mind of man? Well, what's in the mind of man is voodoo. That's what you get to see. You get to see what you are aware of. Okay, so this would be uh, what you're aware of, what you're alive to, what you're awake to, what you get to see, what you get to smell, what you get to sense, what you get to feel. All of that is not coming uh, from the world into your mind. It's coming through the three principles. Is there another way I could say that? Well, what was coming to my mind was, you know, we, we say that every human being is an olum cut. Every human being is a, is a small world. And um, all we're really saying is, is, and I said it yesterday, is that because we each actually create our world, and that we each have a personal world, that, uh, that, that yeah, that, that what's, what are we experiencing? We're experiencing our world. And all of us are walking around on this planet doing the best we can in our, in our little worlds, um, kind of wondering why everybody else's world is so different, or wondering what's wrong in our world, but really not necessarily realizing who's behind that world. And, and, and what Svi is saying is what's behind the world is the three principles. Exactly. So what can happen here is, again, you, you've got, uh, if you, you've got uh, the real world, wherever that is, and you've got two people. Uh, uh, he's got his mind and I've, I've got my mind and uh, remember he, neither of us are seeing the world we're both seeing what's in our own minds there's no way that anyone can see anything unless it first enters through your mind you wouldn't be aware of it otherwise it just wouldn't work it's not there for you right? you'd have no consciousness around you have no awareness of it which is 
why one of the basic implications of these three principles, even without explaining what they are, but just by showing that a person only sees what's in their own mind, uh, what ends up being a reality is the fact of separate, I think I'm spelling this right. No. Uh, reality. Not realties, which would be different home sellers, but this is different realities, separate realities. What I see, what I experience, what I know to be true is wholly based on not some finite truth that's out there. I've discovered the truth. And if only you would see the truth, well, then you'd be okay. Well, that's not quite how it works. There's never a point where I could say, I've been uh, gifted with an awareness uh, so utterly and deeply that I would uh, be able to, to say that there's nothing more to discover. There's also never a place to say that I've discovered so much that I no longer have to listen to anybody else. Well, maybe someone else is being shown something through their awareness that I have no clue about. So uh, often uh, there are people that have very, uh, very strong egos about this, where and they get threatened by discoveries made by other people because uh, they wanted to make that discovery. In the scientific world, I think there's a, a certain competition. In the Gemara, it even talks about this as kina seifrim. There's a certain jealousy between rabbis that each one wants to be considered, you know, the most learned. And that motivates learning. So it's not necessarily a bad thing. But it's rooted in... Yeah, it's, it, it, you may, someone may have a different interpretation of that. But uh, at, at the, uh, uh, that's just one that I've heard. And, and it's rooted in the fact that different people can make different discoveries based on the awareness that they're at. They can have a deeper awareness of something that I might not have. I can see physical things that you might not be able to see, even though they're right in front of both of our faces. It works that way, too. There can be something right there that you can't see it because you don't have the thought or the consciousness surrounding it, and I do. Or vice versa. You can see stuff that I can't see. Why? Because we're not seeing the world. We're seeing what's in our own minds. And the determination or what decides what gets into our minds is the three principles. You want to say something? Another way of saying that is you might think you're looking at the world, but you're actually looking at your own projection and the inside of your eyeballs. <laughs> I, I was just thinking, like, you know, some, you'd be sitting here listening to, to Svi or to myself and, and just have a thought come in and start thinking about it and come back again. And that part of the talk that you were absent for it is not part of your world. It didn't happen for you. You didn't hear me, which is why it's, it's, it makes so much sense to me why certain people come to our programs and walk away thinking, oh my gosh, they didn't say anything. <laughs> they weren't brilliant. Like, people actually come and think that I'm not brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> well, I totally understand that now. <laughs> so that's, uh, before I even get into the three principles, I, 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 I just wanted to show you what the three principles are explaining. They're not explaining the physical world. We don't create things with our thought. It's not like I can just think purple elephants just popping up all over the place just because I think about it. Uh, but we absolutely uh, do create with our thinking what's in our own bubble of awareness, our own worlds, our own minds. And there is nothing else that is in our experience but that. There's no second yeah. option. There's no other way to get in there. Now the cool thing is, is sometimes the three principles allows us to have thought and feel thought that and create a world that isn't true. So that uh, there are people. You mean all the time? Uh, all the time. Uh, we do this all the time. Some people do it on more drastic, dramatic levels. Like there's in their world, uh, there are actually purple elephants walking around the room here. People can have that experience. In, in the DSM, they call it schizophrenia. Now, 
we've decided that schizophrenia is unacceptable and it's out of control and they need to be fixed. But they're in essence doing the same thing that we do. They are creating an experience through thought that doesn't, uh, doesn't match up. It doesn't match up with how things really are. And that's all it is, <coughs> which is good news. So you're saying there's no, there's no, there's, there's no what is it, objective reality out no. there. No, I'm not saying that at all. We're not saying that. We're saying there absolutely is. It's just that you and I and everybody else on the planet, from Moshe Rabbeinu on down, uh, cannot ex cannot possibly experience it. There is a reality. I think I know what the objective reality is. I just, I think I do. I'm going to give you a little potty. It's a, uh, it's a puzzle. Okay? It's a short puzzle. I think it's a puzzle. Right? I, I use a different puzzle. Aim. There's nothing but God. Like, there's really nothing but God. Now, I don't know about you and me, um, you or me, but it looks to me like there's other things besides. Like, it feels like you're here, right? And, and last time I checked, I'm not God and neither are you, but <laughs> we know, we know that... Uh, that this is true. This is the reality. That is the objective reality. But we also know, La uh, Yirani, Maishu Rabbeinu asked God to see his essence, and God said, sorry, uh, you might be able to, but you'd be dead. La Yirani Adam Vachai, it is not possible in our corporeal state, in our condition as human beings, we cannot comprehend a full appreciation of God. It just doesn't, it's just not possible. It just can't, it can't work, okay? It's directional. In other words, we get insight and we, we see more. We see, sometimes we head in the right direction and we, we, get, in, we, we, we get another piece of the, another slice of the pie. We see something a little bit deeper. We see something we never saw before. So we're not saying everybody's perceptions or even within myself, sometimes I have you know, I think more insightful thinking, and sometimes I have thinking that really uh, is kind of crazy. Or, uh, so we're not trying to tell you, um, but what we are saying is that, you know, that's all going to be part of your experience, and it's not a problem. You're going to have crazy thinking, you're going to have less crazy thinking. That might be a better way of putting it. Well, I, I think just, just for simply that question, am I, are we saying that there's no objective reality? There is, I think there is, Certainly. but how could we ever know it or experience it? it uh, the only way we could experience it uh, is through thought, and thought is already part of form. The true reality is formless, and we're not built to experience formless. It's kind of like, I mean, there is a chair here, and if I want to believe there isn't a chair, I'm going to walk into it and hurt myself. But my experience of a chair can only come through thought. I can't experience the world directly. Yeah, so that's only through the principles and my own thinking. Yeah. So yes, there's a reality, but we're all going to experience that chair differently. I may see the color, you may see the shape, I mean, whatever it is, but we, that's the only way we can experience this chair, so to speak. And here's the but thing. it's not like it's not there. And, and we're suggesting that the reality that really matters to you is the one that you experience. Or another way of saying it is, you know, you're not doing God any favors, okay? The reality is reality without you. Our issue is what is our reality? What's the world that we create inside of ourselves? I, I just have a small example. What you saying? Um, Speak up, everybody. I'm sorry. I have a small example that came to my mind while you're talking about what I see and you see and, you know, how it's a chair. Um, I was in this beautiful place where there were some stores, it was in a circle, and there was a fountain and trees and benches, so my girlfriend and I sat down. And I thought I was seeing everything. I was looking around, the tree and the one lone goldfish and the water and everything. And then I said, I wonder what time it is, and my girlfriend told me, and I said, how do you know? She said, there's a clock on the wall right over there. I totally missed it. And it was a big clock. But I didn't, and I, I felt, you 
know, a little stunned because I didn't even know it was there. But she was sitting in the same place as me, looking around and talking to me, and she saw the clock and I did. Absolutely. Yeah. It seems like that the implications for our, for our society are uh, very significant. How, how is the same measure going to enforce it? What do you mean? How, how, how well, I, you know, I, I saw it like this, and the uh, basically says, well, I, this is how we see it. And, you know, I, I saw it differently. It's yeah. Really, uh, okay. Kind of so uh, the question is, Let's, uh, let's just make it a little bit simpler than Sanhedrin. The, one of the basic uh, ways that uh, a, uh, we function in, in Judaism, whether it's marriage or verifying loans or uh, making the new, uh, uh, declaring a new month, is through testimony. People have to testify. I saw this. And then they, they testify in front of a tribunal, and it's accepted as, as fact, and we act accordingly. <coughs> to their testimony. So uh, there's no question that uh, any of the witnesses, what they see was only available to them through thought. They wouldn't be, it wouldn't be available to them otherwise. For whatever reason, I don't know why, uh, the Torah decided that if you have two people whose uh, declaration of what they saw through thought is the same, well, it's accepted as uh, enough to go on as to how we're going to proceed in behavior. Now, there is interesting scenarios where what if you got two people saying they saw it one way and you got two people saying they saw it the other way? Well, it doesn't always... Uh, there's a, there's a, it's a complicated system. And I don't know all the details. But I do know that no matter what a witness is saying, unless he's lying, if he's claiming that he saw something, it could only have been available to him through thought and consciousness powered by mind. That doesn't change. And we're allowed to rely on whatever the Torah says we're supposed to rely on. So I, I don't see that as a, a contradiction at all. But let's go, into, let, let me just take a shot at the three principles. We haven't really done that yet. Okay? So again, uh, we've got uh, these three fundamental elements that need to be present in order for uh, there to be experience, okay? So you've got an experience, and uh, the definition of experience is, is actually infinite. So it, we're including all experiences. Doesn't When I say infinite, I, I'm, I'm not trying to confuse you. I'm just saying limitless, a, limitless, right? Any type of experience you can think of is going to get created through these three principles. And so you need three things. You need, you need mind, you need uh, consciousness, and you need thought. Mind is the energy before life, the power of all things. Uh, it's what uh, allows things to exist, uh, whether form or formless. And it acts as a catalyst and takes thought, whatever you might be thinking in the moment, whether conscious or unconscious, and through consciousness creates the experience that you have. Okay, so uh, this, this arrow is a, is a problem. It, uh, mind is the energy of all things, and it allows you to take thinking uh, and feel it. So it's a principle. If you're having an experience, let's say it's a nice one, well, that means you're having a nice thought, which you are awake to through consciousness. You're conscious of your thinking. Now, it does such a good job of creating, taking your thought and turning it into an experience that it almost feels like it got there without these things being involved. Almost. Uh, it, it does, it completely. <laughs> sure it's it precise, though. It will take exactly your thinking, whether you're aware of the system <coughs> or not, whether you're aware of what you're thinking or not, it automatically takes your thoughts and creates the world that you see. It's uh, beyond your control. You can't stop it. You can't make it work better. It's how all experience gets created. We're saying mind is uh, mind is the, the the power of all things. Uh, the mind is uh, if you want to say that it's, uh, it's if if God works for you, if Hashem works for you, 
that Hashem is infinite. Hashem has no beginning. He has no end. He is everything, uh, everything that exists. He is before existence. He is before time. He is time. Uh, that, that he, uh, there is no, there is nothing outside his jurisdiction. If you want to ascribe all those things to Hashem, then yes, mind or universal mind is Hashem. But if your definition of Hashem does not include all those things, uh, or if your definition of Hashem includes more than what I have said, well then, then, then it isn't Hashem. Do you understand what I'm saying? Okay. So I want to be careful. I, Let me just uh, finish this here. Yeah. I want to be careful to say that if you have a definition of what HaKadosh Baruch Hu is, okay, and it's not this, I don't want to offend you. <laughs> but if your definition of HaKadosh Baruch Hu is kind of fitting well with what I'm saying mind is, then yeah, that's Hashem. But that's up to you. Okay. My, my recommendation is, you know, I know we're all, we're, we, we have this Jewish tradition of analyzing things and, you know, turning into a Gemara here, But uh, it, it's not going to serve us well. Um, you know, that's why I oftentimes really stay away from these terms, to be honest, because it's so tempting for us to, to make sure we've got it, you know, so that when somebody quizzes us in the driveway when we get home, we can tell them what we learned. But uh, what we're learning here is simply, I think for our purposes at this point, that y you and I and every other human being on the planet from the beginning of time till the end of time creates their experience, every single moment of it, from within themselves. We create, it, it, the, I'm saying that really isn't that important, to be quite honest, unless you can tell me why you need to know that. Right, so whether or not you create it or whether mine creates it, what I hope you're, what, what we're trying to point to is that it's created. It's not reality with a big capital R. It's your reality in that moment. And that's, that's really what we're pointing to. In this exactly the three principles in action that we all try to analyze, that's our experience. Every moment of life is the three principles in action, so that's a safe statement. <laughs> yes. Yes, no, but you're right. It's an example of, of you know, no, one person has a need. One person has a need to analyze it, one person doesn't. That's correct. It's uh, all the flavors of, of life are explained because each of us has different thinking. Okay. Correct. Okay. When, when, see, when you see the, um, the board, to me, it's like that it's the power, it's the outlet that you plug in. Back to and the that's it. It's like the thing that enables everything else to happen, right? So if you just see the outlet that starts the process or that is integral to the process, then I don't know, that seems to simplify it without too much other thoughts. <laughs> Plug it in. Yeah. Uh, let, let me just say one more, let me just say it this way. Even if it doesn't make any sense, okay? Just at least you'll hear me say it, maybe like six months from now it might make sense. Do you know what it is that you feel? Do you know what it is and what you see? Like physically see, do you know the stuff that you see? You know the stuff that you smell? <clears throat> stuff that you touch? The experience of, uh, of being happy or being sad? Do you know what that all is? All of it? It's all thought. It's all coming from within. It's not determined from the outside. You could have the outside, the same exact outside, but if you subtract thought, it wouldn't exist. Not your happiness, not your sadness, not your, uh, uh, not your sights, not your sounds, not your smells, not your tastes, nothing. It would be zero. There is a missing link that allows us to hook up to the real world, and that is thought. Directionally, that's going to be uh, a little bit different, or m hopefully that sounds a little bit different than maybe the way you thought about it before you walked in here. I know that before I learned about this, my understanding was is that I touch something, and it sends signals up to my brain, and it sends a message to my brain, and I have an experience of touching something. But now I know that all that happens, maybe, but unless I have thought, 
I don't mean actively thinking about it. I don't mean consciously like, I am touching the stove so I can feel the stove. I'm not talking about that stuff. I'm talking about unless I have an awareness and the, the gift of being awake to that experience, it never happened. It doesn't exist. It's zero. You're only feeling your thinking. Now can, can, can we see the, the impact of that? Can we see the impact of that, the significance of that? I mean, one of the things I try to get across to folks is don't, compu don't confuse simplicity with, with inconsequentiality. This is a very simple idea when I, we're hoping, and that's why I'm trying to get, get this simplified. And, and we're, uh, our tendency is to, compl to make it more complex than it needs to be, and it's just, it isn't helpful in my experience. But what I, what I think we're really hoping is that you can see this is really not a complex idea at all. It's a very simple notion, but it is earth-shattering in terms of its implications if we really see it, if we really see just the simple fact of where our experience comes from, it, it, it shifts the, it, it has the potential to, to shift our entire experience of life. Not in the details, we'll still experience the things that we experience, but in terms of how we relate to it. Because we realize we're living in our own world. We realize that what we're experiencing isn't solid concrete. It's very malleable jello much more so. It isn't God's gospel, it's, it's my experience in the moment. Oh, I feel it really intensely? That's proof, it must be true. No, it's proof that we're fantastic at creating our reality. And so what I found is, because we, we called this session, I think it was living in a world of thought, just knowing what our world is. Our world is made of thought, just as he said, our world. The, the, the Lego that makes up our world, each of those little pieces is thought. That's all we're saying, that we bring to life. That's all we're saying. But knowing that starts to open us up to an amazing world of possibilities. What I call the possible. Okay? Because when we don't know that, that's what I call the prison. I need one more P for three P's. <laughs> Possible. Prison. Purgatory. In the purgatory, yeah. Prison can become purgatory for some people, it's true. But well, it's in the prison. Yeah. They don't have to do the Yeah. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Um, so you mentioned what we get to see what we are aware of. Very, very, we get to see what we are aware of. I have a magnet home that says, look for the good of everyone and you will find this. Yeah. And so we go just brought back into life that if I will, if I will let that be my filter, then just my whole world changes. Such a great good, example. And then, and, I, and I'm going to see it in every person, even the dowry bum who used to be rolling in the gutter, I'll see it's all in all of him. Great so example. That's a great example of, of the humility, you know, that person you can't stand, that, are, that you believe everybody can't stand because they're obviously so annoying. Well, they have a mother, <laughs> you know. <laughs> You know, there, there's somebody out there who, who sees that person totally differently. Yeah, and, and that's just as real to them as, as your reality. Yeah. I just also want to say why it's so important for me, that, that we're, 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 we're to train ourselves and be done with Hapskus, because as soon as we, just that, that filter, it's, that's going to be our reality, just to see the good people. And I read somewhere that the whole reason why Hashem gave us an imagination is not Disney and not all those things, but the only reason we get gave us the imagination is just so we can use it to find reasons to um, judge people favorably. So that um, it just becomes very, very powerful in terms of our thoughts creating our reality. Yeah. yeah. It just occurred to me that um, the fact that in the show you have to have two witnesses to me, you will cry, and that just shows that. Um, they support the theory of separate reality. That like yes. if you just have one person reality, that's just his reality. But if the two people see the same exact thing, then it's better evidence for um Yeah, it occurred. Mm -hmm. Correct. If we all saw it straight as it was, then you wouldn't need to aid him, you're right. There's more to see there about that. Because yeah. there are instances where one 
witness is sufficient, particularly when it comes to prohibitions, such as eating a piece of meat. You're allowed to rely on one person's testimony, so there's more to see about it. We're, we're time for a break? break time. But what time is lunch? <laughs> yeah. Because I need, I need to, I need, I'm thinking chessboard here. I'm four steps ahead. Well, it sounds like all you're interested in is eating. Twelve thirty. So if twelve thirty is now session, eleven fifteen. Eleven fifteen is the next session. Yeah. Oh, so yeah, okay, so fine. Eleven fifteen. Perfect. We're right on schedule. Yeah. Okay. So we're back at eleven. Eleven fifteen, people. Eleven fifteen. Eleven fifteen.